Hello and welcome back to the Peony Patterns YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and I am the sew along host here at Peony Patterns. Today we are back for another sew along where we will be sewing the beautiful Dahlia dress together. Dahlia is a gorgeous dress featuring short or mid length ruched puffed sleeves and an open statement back that is completed with ties that form a pretty bow. The skirt options include a simple skirt with a deep hem or a sweet three-tiered style. If you haven't yet purchased your copy of the Dahlia pattern, you can now do so using the link below in the description of this video. We are now going to jump straight in and see all of the pattern pieces that I have cut and prepared for my two Dahlia dresses that I will be creating throughout the sew along. If at any time you would like to skip particular parts of the construction of the Dahlia dress, you can do so using the timestamps down below in the description box. Here are all of my pattern pieces cut and prepared for my first Dahlia dress. So firstly, I have two front bodice pieces cut. One of those is in my main fabric and the other is in my lining and they are both cut on the fold. Then I have four back bodice pieces cut. Two of those are in my main fabric and two are in my lining and they are cut as a mirror image set of each other. I then have two back waist elastic casing pieces one of those is in my main fabric and the other is in the lining fabric. Then here I have my two tie pieces. So they are cut on the fold and I have cut both of those in my main fabric. However, this is a great spot to use a contrasting fabric if you wish. I then have my two sleeve pieces. They are cut on the fold. So you can choose from either the short or the mid-length sleeve. Now for this Dahlia, I will be making it with the tiered skirt. So I have all of my tiered skirt pieces up here on the right. So I have cut two top tier skirt pieces, four middle tier skirt pieces, and eight bottom tier skirt pieces. I then have my back waist elastic piece here, and I have cut that using the cutting chart on page 15 of the pattern. I then also have my sleeve elastic here as well. Now we do not want to cut the sleeve elastic at this stage as further instructions will be provided throughout the sew along. Here are all of the pattern pieces cut and prepared for my second Dahlia. So once again, I have my two front bodice pieces cut, one in my main fabric, the other in my lining, and they are both cut on the fold. I then have four back bodice pieces cut. So two of those are in my main fabric, the other two are in my lining and they are cut as a mirrored image set of each other. I then have my two sleeve pieces cut. So they are cut on the fold and I have those cut in my main fabric. Once again, you can choose from either the short or the mid length sleeve. I then have my two back waist elastic casing panels cut. So one of those are in my main fabric and the other is in my lining fabric. Then here I have my two tie pieces cut. So they are cut on the fold and here I have chosen to use a contrasting fabric for those. I then have my back waist elastic piece cut using the cutting chart on page 15 of the pattern. I then have the elastic ready here for my sleeves. But as I mentioned before, we are not going to cut the sleeve elastic yet until we actually construct the sleeves. Then for this Dahlia, I'm going to be making it with the simple skirt. So I have my two skirt pieces cut over here, ready for my simple skirt. Now for the simple skirt, you will find the cutting charts on page 13 of the pattern. And for the three tiered skirt, you will find the cutting charts on page 14 of the pattern to go ahead and cut your skirt pieces. But that is everything that I have cut and prepared for my two Dahlia dresses. Now to begin the construction of our Dahlia dresses, we are firstly going to be working on our ties. So we are going to take one of our tie pieces and fold that in half lengthwise right sides together and press. 
Then repeat that for our second tie piece. Once you have then pressed both of the ties in half lengthwise, right sides together, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to sew along the long straight raw edge and down the angled end on both of the ties using a half an inch seam allowance, making sure to back stitch at each end. And we will also be making sure that we leave this straight short raw end on both unsewn. Once sewn, we are then going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. And we are also going to clip the corner here at the wider angle of the tie to allow that to sit nicely when turned out the right way. Alternatively, at this stage, you can use a pair of pinking shears to trim that seam allowance. So I'm going to start by clipping the corner here at the wider angle of the tie, making sure to clip close to the stitching, but not through the stitching. Now that I have clipped that corner, I'm going to continue by trimming the seam allowance and then repeating those steps on my second tie piece. So I've gone ahead and trimmed that seam allowance down on both of my ties and I've also clipped both of those corners. Now to help reduce the bulk in the angled section of both of our ties, we are going to very carefully taper the points to one eighth of an inch. So as you can see, I have now clipped both of these corners and have tapered those to one eighth of an inch to allow that to turn nicely when turned out the right way. Now I'm going to repeat that for my second tie piece. Then we can turn those out the right way. So I'm just using a turning tool to do that. Now just using a chopstick or a blunt pencil, we are going to very carefully push those points out at the end of each of our ties. Then we are going to press both of those. Once pressed, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance to now top stitch along those two long straight ends and also the angled edge. Once you have then finished top stitching both of your tie pieces, we can then pop those aside. Now we are going to be constructing our back waist elastic casing. So taking our two elastic casing pieces, we are going to be placing our main and our lining pieces right sides together, aligning the top raw edges, and we are going to pin those in place. Once pinned, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Once sewn, we are then going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Alternatively, pinking shears can be used. Once we've trimmed the seam allowance, we are then going to open up both of those back waist elastic casing pieces away from each other. And we are going to press that seam allowance now towards the lining. Once pressed, as an optional step, we can now go ahead and understitch that seam allowance in place to the lining using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I've just gone ahead and completed that optional step of understitching that seam allowance now in place towards my lining piece. Now we are going to fold the back elastic casing main over onto the lining wrong sides together and press. Now we are going to be working with our back elastic casing panel with the main fabric facing right sides up towards us and with the sewn and folded edge at the top we are then going to measure down half an inch from this top sewn and folded edge and place a mark using an air erasable pin. Then repeat that for the opposite side as well. 
Then using a ruler and our removable sewing marker, we are then going to draw a guideline from one side of our back waist elastic casing to the other side using those positions marked. So the guideline will be half an inch from the top sewn and folded edge. Now beginning at one of the raw side edges of our back waist elastic casing, we are going to sew over that guideline that we have just created, remembering to back stitch at each end and making sure that we sew through both layers, our main and our lining fabric. Once you have then sewn along that guideline and you have created a casing for us to now thread our elastic through, you can then take your back waist elastic piece and we are now going to thread it through that casing. So I'm just going to use a safety pin for this and starting at one of our short raw ends, I'm going to be threading that through the casing that we've just created. Now once the tail end of our elastic reaches the original opening that we began threading through, we are going to align that with that short raw end and pin in place. Then we are going to head to the sewing machine to secure that elastic in place using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I've just secured that one end of elastic in place. Now I'm going to continue threading the remaining elastic through to the other side. Now once we get to the other side we are going to do the same thing by aligning the raw end of elastic with the raw edge of our fabric and pin that in place. Now prior to stitching you will want to just check to make sure that your elastic has not twisted inside of the casing. Then we are going to head back to the sewing machine to now secure that end of elastic in place as well using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance again. Once you have then finished securing that second side of elastic in place then we are going to pop that aside. Now we are going to be constructing our bodices. So taking our front bodice lining and our front bodice main, we are going to be placing those right sides together and aligning all raw edges. We are then going to pin those together around the neckline. Then head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew around the neckline where we have pinned. Once sewn, we are then going to clip the curves of the neckline, making sure to not cut through any of our stitching. Then we are going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Alternatively, pinking shears can be used. Once you've then trimmed the seam allowance, the next step is optional and that is to now understitch that seam allowance of the neckline towards the front bodice lining. If you would like to go ahead with this step of understitching, then you will need to begin and stop stitching one inch from each of the shoulders. So I will go ahead and do that step now, then we'll come back to show you what that will look like if you do decide to go ahead with that. So if you have decided to go ahead with that optional step of understitching your seam allowance of your neckline to your front bodice lining, then this is what that will now look like. So I began stitching one inch from one of the shoulders and I have sewn around the neckline and then stopping one inch from the opposite shoulder. Now we can pop our front bodice pieces aside. Now we are going to be working on our back bodices. Prior to constructing our back bodices though, the next step is optional but is definitely recommended and that is to stabilize the back buttonhole area of our left back bodice lining piece. So taking a one and a half inch strip of fusible interfacing, we can go ahead and place that to the wrong side of our left back bodice lining piece to now stabilize that area. Once you've then pressed your interfacing in place, you can then pop your left back bodice lining piece aside. 
Now taking our left back bodice main piece with the right side of the fabric facing up towards us. We are going to then take our back waist elastic casing and place that on top of our left back bodice main piece, right sides together. So we are going to be aligning the raw centre back edge of our left back bodice main piece with the right hand side raw edge of our back waist elastic casing. Ensuring that the raw bottom edges of both pieces are also aligned. We are then going to pin that in place. Then we can head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 7 inch seam allowance and a basting stitch to baste that in place. Once you have then basted your back waist elastic casing in place onto your left back bodice main piece, then we are going to take one of our tie pieces that we prepared earlier and place that now directly above our back waist elastic casing right sides together with our back bodice main piece. Now before proceeding you do want to make sure that the sharpest point of your tie is facing downwards and making sure that there is no gap between our back waist elastic casing and our tie we are then going to pin our tie also to our back bodice piece. So I've now pinned my tie in place as well directly above that back waist elastic casing and as I mentioned my sharpest point of my tie is facing down. Now I'm going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a basting stitch to baste my tie in place as well. Now that we have basted our tie piece in place as well, we are then going to take the corresponding back bodice lining piece and place that right sides together with our back bodice main piece. Now aligning the raw edges of our shoulders, neckline and the center backs, our back waist elastic casing panel and our ties will now be sandwiched in between our main and our lining fabrics. We are then going to pin around the neckline and down both centre backs. Once pinned, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to sew around the neckline and down the centre back using a half an inch seam allowance. Once sewn, we are then going to clip the neckline curve the back bodice corners and also the curve of the center back, being careful to not clip through any of the stitching. We are then going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Alternatively, pinking shears can be used though. So I'm going to start by clipping the corners. Then I'm going to go in with my pinking shears and trim that seam allowance down. Once we have then clipped the corners and trimmed the seam allowance, we can then turn our back bodice piece out the right way and gently just push out those corners. Then we can give our left back bodice piece a press. So that is now our left back bodice piece pressed. Now we are going to move that aside and now begin working with our right back bodice main piece. So I have my right back bodice main piece here facing right sides up. We are going to take our left back bodice piece that we've already prepared and place that now right sides together with our right back bodice main piece. We are going to take our back waist elastic casing panel and position that along the bottom raw edge of our right back bodice main piece and align that with the raw edge of our center back just like we did with our left piece earlier and we are going to pin that in place. Once pinned we can then head to the sewing machine to base that in place using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. 
Now we are going to take our second tie piece, making sure that the sharpest point is facing downwards. And we are going to place that directly above our back waist elastic casing, making sure that there is no gap left in between them. And also aligning the short raw end of our tie piece with the center back raw edge of our back bodice piece. Pin that in place, then we are going to head back to the sewing machine to secure that in place using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a basting stitch. Now that you've basted your second tie piece in place to your right back bodice main piece, we are then going to take our corresponding back bodice lining piece and place that on top right sides together with our right back bodice main piece aligning those raw edges around the shoulder neckline and the center back again then we are going to pin those together around the neckline and the center back raw edges once again sandwiching our tie and our back waist elastic casing in between those two layers of fabric Now once pinned, we can head to the sewing machine to sew around the neckline and down the center back, making sure that we do not get either of the ties caught up in this seam as we are sewing. So I'm going to head to the sewing machine now to sew where I have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Once you have then sewn your back bodice lining to your right back bodice main piece, we are then going to clip the corners and also the curves, then trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Alternatively, again, pinking shears can be used. Once we've finished clipping the corners and the curves, then trimming the seam allowance down, we can then turn our back bodice piece out the right way. Once again, gently pushing those corners out. Then press. Once pressed, we will now be attaching our back bodices to our front bodice. So bringing back our front bodice piece, we are going to separate the main and the lining fabric away from each other and flatten out one of our shoulder sections. So I'm looking at the lining of my front bodice as well as the main fabric. We are then going to take our back bodices and on the corresponding side to the shoulder that we have opened up on our front bodice, we are also going to separate the main and lining fabric apart on our back bodice. And we are going to place that right sides together with our front bodice at the shoulder section. So we are going to be aligning the back and the front bodices together at those shoulder raw edges and pinning. Now it's very important that the seam in the middle where the lining and your main fabric meet up on both your back and your front bodice pieces align perfectly. Now we are going to repeat those steps for the opposite side. So this is my front bodice piece here. I'm separating my main and my lining fabrics apart from each other. I'm then going to do the exact same on the corresponding back bodice piece. So separating my main and lining fabrics apart at the shoulder and then aligning those together and pinning. Once you have then pinned your back bodices to your front bodice at both shoulders. We are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Once sewn, this is now an ideal time to double check that those seams align perfectly where our main and lining fabrics meet up. Then we are going to press those seams open. Then you can turn your bodice out the right way and press.
Now we are going to be working with our bodice opened out. So I have my front bodice here and my back bodice here. So I've separated those away from each other. Now taking one of our back bodices, we are going to separate the main and the lining apart. So we are looking at the right side of our main fabric and the right side of our lining of our back bodice on that side. Now taking our front bodice on that same corresponding side, we are going to flip it over so that it is now right sides together with our bodice main. And we are going to align those short raw side edges and pin. Now we are going to take our bodice lining from that same side and flip it around to be right sides together with our front bodice lining. Align those raw edges and pin. So we now have the side seams pinned on one side. We're going to repeat those steps to then pin our second lot of side seams. So once again, we are going to be opening our bodice out as best as we can now because we do have those side seams pinned in place on one side. So I have my front bodice here and my remaining back bodice here. I'm going to separate the main and the lining fabrics apart of my back bodice there. Then taking my front bodice main on the remaining side, I'm going to flip that over, align those raw edges and pin. And then flip our remaining front and back bodice pieces over towards each other, aligning those raw edges and pin those as well right sides together. So now that we have all four of those side seams pinned, we are going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew all of those. Once we've then sewn those side seams, we are then going to press all four seams open. Then we are going to turn our bodice out the right way. and press again. Now before proceeding, the next step is optional and that is to baste your main and your lining fabrics together at the arm's eyes. So if you do decide to go ahead with this step, I like to firstly begin by aligning the side seams on my main and my lining fabrics together as well as the shoulder seams. I like to begin by pinning those then making sure that your main and your lining fabrics are aligned at the raw edge. You can then go ahead with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and a basting stitch to baste those in place. So for those of you who would like to baste your arms eyes, this is what that step will look like. So I've just gone ahead and basted mine using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So it will then just hold my main and my lining fabric in place in those areas. So to now begin the construction of our sleeves, the following instructions will be the same whether you're making the short sleeve or the mid length sleeve. So to begin constructing our sleeves, we are firstly going to be using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch along the bottom raw edges of both of our sleeves, making sure to not trim off any fabric whilst doing so. So once you've then gone ahead and finished the raw edge on both of your sleeve pieces, then we are going to be folding the bottom now finished edge of our sleeve over towards the wrong side of the fabric by 5 eighths of an inch and pressing. Once we've then finished pressing that bottom edge over towards the wrong side of the fabric by 5 eighths of an inch, we're then going to repeat that exact same step for our second sleeve. So I've gone ahead and pressed that bottom edge over towards the wrong side of my sleeve for my second sleeve as well. 
Now we can go ahead and unfold that and it has now made a memory crease in the bottom edge of our sleeve. Now we are going to be folding our sleeve in half to find the center of our sleeve. So I've just pressed that and I will now go ahead and open it up and that has now made a memory crease down the center of my sleeve. So we now have two memory creases in our sleeve, one along the bottom edge of our sleeve, five eighths of an inch up from that finished edge and also one down the center of our sleeve as well. So now working on just one of our sleeve pieces, we are going to be working on it with the wrong side of the fabric facing up towards us. Now we are going to be measuring up seven eighths of an inch from the bottom finished edge along that memory crease that we created in the center of our sleeve and place a mark seven eighths of an inch up from the bottom along that center memory crease. Now using our air erasable marker again, we are going to be measuring up from that mark that we've just created along the center memory crease and placing a second mark using the measurements in the chart provided on page 43 of the Dahlia pattern. So this measurement will differ depending on what size Dahlia you are making. So I've gone ahead and placed my second mark up here by using the chart on page 43 of the Dahlia pattern. So I've measured from that point, which was seven eighths of an inch up from the bottom edge, and I've measured up to create my second point using that measurement provided within the chart. Now using a ruler and my air erasable marker, I'm now going to draw directly down that center memory crease and I'm going to draw a line now connecting those two marks together. Now I've just put my sleeve aside to now prepare our sleeve elastic. So because we have not cut our sleeve elastic pieces yet, we are going to use the measurements provided on page 15 of the Dahlia pattern to now mark out how much elastic we do need for our chosen size and chosen sleeve length, but we are not going to cut it yet. So I'm simply going to measure it out and use an air erasable marker to place a mark. So I've just measured my elastic from the raw edge using that cutting chart on page 15 of the pattern for the size and the sleeve length I'm making. And I've placed a mark there to then show the length of elastic I will need for my sleeve. Now, still without cutting the elastic, we are going to bring our sleeve back and we are going to align the raw end of the elastic with the second mark that we created on our sleeve, making sure that we are working on the wrong side of our sleeve still, and we are going to pin that in place. So I've just pinned the raw end of my elastic in place, so that is now aligning with that second mark that we created. So our first mark is down here, and then my cut line for my elastic is there. So essentially what we are going to be doing is we are going to be stretching our elastic still without cutting it and that cut line will then eventually align up with that first mark that we created. So we're going to head to the sewing machine and place our sleeve onto the sewing machine aligning the presser foot and the needle over the raw end of the elastic. We are then going to lower the press the foot and also the needle manually through the elastic and also obviously the sleeve, so through both layers. The needle should be aligned in the center of our elastic. Then using a straight stitch, we are going to back stitch at the beginning a few times to secure that elastic in place. Then we are going to carefully stretch our elastic so that the cut guideline on our elastic aligns with the first guideline that we created on our sleeve. And obviously we are going to continue by aligning the elastic down the center crease that we have also made on our sleeve. And we are going to then continue stitching down the center of our elastic until we meet both of these points. So it is very important that these points of our cut line on our elastic and also that first guideline meet up accurately at the very end. 
So we are placing our sleeve onto our sewing machine and lowering our presser foot. Then I'm going to lower my needle through the center of my elastic and I'm going to back stitch a few times just to secure that end of elastic in place. So now that I've secured my elastic in place, I'm now going to stretch my elastic down and I'm going to align the cut line on my elastic to the first guideline that we've marked on our sleeve, making sure to also center the elastic down that center memory crease that we've also created in our sleeve and making sure while stitching, we are sewing down the center of our elastic. So I'm going to now continue sewing. Now once that point is met where our cut line on our elastic aligns with the first guideline in our sleeve, we are then going to back stitch a few times on this end as well. Then you can go ahead and remove your sleeve from your sewing machine. So once you've then gone ahead and stitched your elastic in place, you can then very carefully cut below the cut line on your elastic making sure to not cut through the fabric. So now this is what the wrong side of your sleeve will look like. And then also the right side of your sleeve. Now we are going to head back to the sewing machine to sew two rows of gathering stitches around the top curved edge of our sleeve between our notches. So the first row of gathering stitches will be a quarter of an inch away from the top raw edge. Then the second row will be three eighths of an inch away from that first row. Once you've then sewn your two rows of gathering stitches at the top curved edge, we are then going to fold our sleeve in half vertically right sides together. We are then going to align and pin the inner raw edges here. Then head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Then we are also going to finish that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you've then finished sewing that seam and have also finished that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then we are going to refold our hem memory crease back in place. We can then pin that also in place. Now head back to the sewing machine where we are going to edge stitch that sleeve hem. Once you have then edge stitched your hem in place, then we are going to use those gathering stitches that we created earlier to now gather our sleeve cap. and leaving the tails of our gathering stitches long so we can adjust those shortly when we are setting those into our bodice. Now we are going to go ahead and repeat all of those steps on our second sleeve. Once you have then repeated all of those exact same steps and have completed your second sleeve, we are now going to attach our sleeves to our bodice. So we are going to turn our bodice inside out. So I'm looking at the right side of my lining here and my main fabric is inside. We are going to take one of our sleeves and place it inside of one of our arms eyes so that our main fabric on our bodice and the main fabric on our sleeves are facing right sides together. We are then going to align the sleeve seam to the bodice side seam and pin. 
Then I like to continue by aligning the raw edges of my sleeve and my arms eye together and continue pinning up until I reach the beginning of my gathering stitches on both sides. Now that I have pinned up until the beginning of the gathering stitches on either side of my sleeve, we are then going to adjust the gathers to now fit in the arm's eye and continue pinning. So now that we have one of our sleeves pinned to our bodice, right sides together with our bodice main, we are now going to repeat those same steps for our second sleeve. Once you now have both sleeves pinned in place, we are going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to attach those. Then we are also going to finish off both raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then finished attaching your sleeves to your bodice and you've also finished off those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then you can go ahead and remove the gathering stitches from your sleeves and turn your bodice out the right way, then press. Now an optional step at this stage is to tack the seam allowance of your sleeve towards the bodice by stitching in the ditch along the shoulder seam and that will then hold that seam allowance in place. Another optional step at this stage is to baste your main and lining fabrics together along the bottom raw edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I've just gone ahead and basted my main and lining fabrics together along the bottom raw edge. Now we are going to create our buttonhole. So if preferred, the buttonhole can be left until the dress is completed. It is definitely personal preference. But if you would like to go ahead and create your buttonhole, we are now going to do that. So for Dahlia, we are going to be creating one horizontal buttonhole on the left hand side of the back bodice. The buttonhole should be centered on the upper section of the bodice that will then overlap with the right side of our back bodice. So the buttonhole should be centered on this upper section of the bodice and it should be a quarter of an inch away from this center back so I'm going to go ahead and mark my buttonhole out. Then we'll be back to show you exactly where that will be positioned. So I've just gone ahead and marked out where my buttonhole will be going on my left back bodice piece. So it will be going between these pins here, which is a quarter of an inch away from the center back edge there. And then I have centered it horizontally between this top area of my left back bodice piece. So I'm going to go ahead to the sewing machine now to create my buttonhole. So I've just gone ahead and created my buttonhole on my left back bodice piece. Now using that buttonhole already created on our left back bodice piece as a guide, we can now mark out our button placement mark on our right back bodice piece, keeping in mind that Dahlia has a three quarter of an inch overlap. So I'm going to go ahead now and attach my button using that buttonhole as a guideline on my right back bodice piece. Once you've then attached your button to your right back bodice piece, then you are now looking at your completed Dahlia bodice. So to now begin the construction of our Dahlia skirts, we are firstly going to be working on the simple skirt. So if you are making the tiered skirt, you can skip ahead to the construction of that using the timestamps in the description box of this video. But for those of you who are making the simple skirt, we will now go ahead with the construction of that. So I have my two simple skirt pieces here. We are going to be taking those 
and placing those right sides together. We are then going to align those together at both of the short raw side edges and pin. Once you have then gone ahead and pinned your front and back simple skirt pieces together at those side raw edges, now is also an ideal time to add in any care and size labels as well. So now we are going to head to the sewing machine to sew where we have pinned to create now our side seams using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we can also finish off both of those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have finished attaching your front and back skirt pieces together and you've also finished off both of those raw edges, now we are going to press those seams towards the back of our skirt. Once you've then pressed both of those side seams towards the back of the skirt, then we are going to begin the hemming process of this simple skirt. So we are going to be folding the bottom raw edge of the skirt. So I've just flipped mine around to work with it upside down. So we are going to fold that bottom edge over towards the wrong side of the fabric by half an inch and press the entire way around. Once you have then pressed the bottom raw edge of your skirt over towards the wrong side of the fabric by half an inch and you've pressed that the entire way around, we are then going to fold that again by a further three inches towards the wrong side of the fabric again and continue pressing. Once you have then finished pressing your hem up a further three inches towards the wrong side of the fabric. You can pop a few pins in to hold that in place. Then we are going to head to the sewing machine to edge stitch the hem in place. Once you have then edge stitched your hem in place, then you are now looking at your completed simple skirt. Now to begin the construction of our tiered skirt, we are firstly going to be working on the top tier. So I have my two top tier skirt pieces here. We are going to be placing those right sides together, aligning the short raw side edges and pinning those. Once you've then finished pinning your two top tier skirt pieces together at those side raw edges, this is also an ideal time to add in any care and size labels as well. Then we are going to head to the sewing machine to sew where we have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we will also finish off both of those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you've then finished sewing your two top tier pieces together and you've also finished off those raw edges, then we are going to press those seams towards the back of the skirt. Then we can set our top tier aside. Now to create the middle tier, we are going to need our four middle tier skirt pieces. So I'm going to start by popping two of those aside and just working on two to start off with. So we are going to be placing those right sides together and aligning those at the short raw ends just on one side and pinning. So I have pinned them at only one side. Now I'm going to separate them at the other and fold one of them over so that we are looking at the right side of that fabric. Then taking another one of our middle tier skirt pieces, we are going to be placing that right sides together with that opposite raw end, aligning those at the short raw end and pinning. Then taking that third middle tier piece and flipping that over on itself so that we are looking at the right side of that as well. Then taking our fourth and final middle tier piece, 
we are going to align that right sides together with our third piece aligning them at the short raw side edges and pinning so now we have our four middle tier skirt pieces pinned together making one continuous length of fabric and we still do have these two open raw side edges here from our first and our fourth middle tier piece so we are now going to place those right sides together and pin those together as well So now we have made one continuous loop of fabric containing all four of our middle tier skirt pieces. Now we can head to the sewing machine to sew where we have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we are also going to finish all four of those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then finished attaching all of your four middle tier pieces together, and you've also finished off those raw edges. Now we are going to press our seam allowances all towards one side. Once you have then pressed all of your seams to one side, we can then pop our middle tier aside as well. Now we will begin the construction of our bottom tier. So I have my eight bottom tier pieces here. Just like before, we are going to pop them all aside besides two of them. So I have two of my bottom tier pieces here and we are going to be placing those right sides together and aligning them at one of the short raw ends and pinning. So we now have one of our short raw ends pinned together. We are going to open that second bottom tier piece back on itself. So we are looking at the right side of the fabric. Then taking our third bottom tier piece, we are going to place that on top of our second piece, right sides together and aligning one of those short raw edges of our third piece with the opposite end of our second piece and pin. Then take our third piece and fold it back on itself, ready to attach our fourth bottom tier piece on this opposite side of our third piece. So I'm going to continue attaching all of the bottom tier pieces like that until I have attached all eight of them. So now that we have pinned all eight bottom tier pieces together, we will have one continuous length of fabric with the first piece and the eighth piece both still having an open raw edge that is unpinned. So now we are going to take both of those, place them right sides together and aligning those short raw ends. Then we are going to pin those, now making one continuous loop of fabric, just like we did with the middle tier. So now that we have finished forming our bottom tier by pinning all eight pieces together, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Then we are also going to finish off all of those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then finished attaching all of your eight bottom tier pieces together and you've finished all of those raw edges as well, now we are going to press those side seams towards one side, just like we have done with our middle tier. Then once you have finished pressing all of those side seams towards one side, we are going to head to our overlocker or our sewing machine using a zigzag stitch to now finish off the entire bottom raw edge of our bottom tier. Once you have then finished the entire bottom raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, now we are going to press 
that bottom now finished edge over towards the wrong side of the fabric by half an inch and we are going to press that. So this is my bottom edge here. I just have mine upside down to work with it. So I'm going to go ahead now and fold the entire bottom edge over by a half an inch and press that all the way around my bottom tier. Once you have then finished pressing up your bottom edge over towards the wrong side of your fabric by half an inch, we are now going to head to our sewing machine where we will now edge stitch that in place using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have then finished edge stitching that hem in place on your bottom tier, we are now going to gather the entire top raw edge of our bottom tier. So to gather that, we are going to sew the first row of gathering stitches a quarter of an inch away from the top raw edge. Then the second row will be three eighths of an inch away from our first row of gathering stitches. And we are going to be sewing that around the entire top raw edge of the bottom tier. Once you have then finished sewing your two rows of gathering stitches around the top raw edge of your bottom tier, we are going to pop that aside and now repeat those exact same steps for our middle tier. So I have my middle tier piece here with the four middle tier skirt pieces that are all now joined in one continuous loop. So now we are going to sew the two rows of gathering stitches on the top raw edge of the middle tier as well. So just like the bottom tier, we will be sewing the first row a quarter of an inch from the top raw edge of our middle tier. Then the second row will be three eighths of an inch away from that first row. So I'm going to go ahead now to my sewing machine and sew my two rows of gathering stitches on the top raw edge of my middle tier as well. Once you've then finished sewing your gathering stitches along the top raw edge of your middle tier as well, then we are going to mark the center of each individual section of the middle tier. So we are going to find the center point between two seams and we will mark that either using an air erasable marker or a pin. So we'll simply be folding each middle tier piece in half matching side seam to side seam to find the center point and then using a pin or an air erasable marker to mark that point. In total there will be four center points. Once you've then marked the four center points on your middle tier we are then going to bring back our bottom tier and we are going to gather our bottom tier to be the same width as our middle tier. Once you have then finished gathering your bottom tier to be the same width as your middle tier, then we are now going to place our bottom tier over our middle tier, right sides together, aligning the top raw edge of our bottom tier with the bottom raw edge of our middle tier. And we are going to start by aligning one of our side seams on our middle tier with one of the side seams on our bottom tier and pinning. Then we are going to find the next side seam on our bottom tier and align that with one of our middle tier center points and pin. Then continue by finding the next bottom tier side seam that will then be aligned with one of the side seams on the middle tier. The next bottom tier side seam will be aligned with the center point on the next middle tier piece. Then we are aligning the bottom tier side seam that comes next with the next middle tier side seam and pinning. Then the next bottom tier side seam will be aligned with another center point. Then the next bottom tier side seam and middle tier side seam will be aligned. And then finally we'll be aligning the last bottom tier side seam with the last center point on our middle tier.
Now before proceeding you will just want to double check that you have not twisted any of your tears at all when pinning. Then we are going to be distributing the gathers evenly between those points that we have pinned and we'll continue pinning our bottom tier to our middle tier. Once you have then finished pinning your entire bottom tier to the bottom raw edge of your middle tier and you've finished distributing those gathers evenly, we are now going to head to our sewing machine to sew our bottom tier to our middle tier using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we are also going to finish off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have finished attaching your bottom tier to your middle tier and you've also finished off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, you can then go ahead and remove your gathering stitches. Then we are going to open out our skirt and press that seam allowance now up towards our middle tier. Once you've then finished pressing that up towards your middle tier, we are now going to head to the sewing machine where we will then top stitch that seam allowance up in place using a 1 8th of an inch seam allowance. Once you've then finished top stitching that seam allowance up in place towards your middle tier, now we are going to find the center points along the top raw edge of our middle tier. So we are simply going to find the center point of each section in our middle tier by folding side seam to side seam and then using a removable sewing marker or an air erasable pen to mark each center point. So there'll be four center points in total. Once you've found all four center points of each section in your middle tier, we are going to pop that aside. Now we are going to be finding the center points along the bottom raw edge of our top tier. So just like before, we are going to fold side seam to side seam to find our two center points for our top tier. Then we are going to gather our middle tier to be the same width as our top tier. Once you've then finished gathering your middle tier to be the same width as your top tier, we are now going to place our middle tier over our top tier, right sides together. We are going to start by matching one of the marked center points of the middle tier with one of the top tier side seams and pin that in place. Then find the next center point in our middle skirt and align that with the next center point of the top tier. Then again find the next center point in the middle tier and align that with the next side seam in our top tier. Then lastly we are going to take the last center point in our middle tier and align that with the last center point in our top tier and pin. Once you have then pinned at those four points, we are then going to continue by distributing the gathers evenly between those points and continue pinning our middle tier to our top tier. Once you have then distributed those gathers evenly and have pinned your middle tier to the bottom raw edge of your top tier, then we are going to head to our sewing machine where we will sew where we have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we can also finish off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then attached your middle tier to your top tier and you've also finished that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then you can go ahead and remove the gathering stitches. Then we are going to press that seam now up towards our top tier.
Then once you have finished pressing that seam now up towards your top tier, we are going to head back to the sewing machine where we are going to top stitch that seam allowance up in place using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have then finished top stitching that seam allowance up in place, you are now looking at your completed tiered skirt. So now to complete our Dahlia dresses, we are going to be gathering and attaching our skirts to our bodices. For the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to be using the tiered skirt on video, but the instructions will be the same whether you're making the tiered skirt or the simple skirt. So we are going to start by heading to our sewing machine where we will be sewing two rows of gathering stitches along the top raw edge of our skirt. The first row will be a quarter of an inch from the top raw edge. The second row will then be three eighths of an inch away from that first row. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my two rows of gathering stitches around the entire top raw edge of my skirt now. Now that we have sewn our two rows of gathering the stitches along the top raw edge of our skirt, we are now going to bring back our bodice. Now we are going to gather our skirt to be the same width as our bodice. Once you have then finished gathering your skirt to be the same width as your bodice, we are then going to turn the skirt inside out. And we are then going to take our bodice and place it inside of our skirt so that our fabrics are now right sides together. Now aligning the top raw edge of our skirt and the bottom raw edge of our bodice, we are going to start by aligning the side seams on our skirt, the side seams on our bodice and pinning. Now that we have our skirt pinned to our bodice at the side seams, we are then going to distribute the gathers evenly between those points and continue pinning our skirt to our bodice, making sure that when you reach the back, you stretch the back waist elastic casing panel out as you are pinning your skirt to that section. You will also want to make sure that your bodice ties are completely out of the way so that you don't get them caught up in this seam. So when you reach the back waist elastic casing panel, you will simply just stretch that out and continue pinning your skirt to that section as well. Once you've then finished distributing those gathers evenly and you've finished pinning your skirt to your bodice, then we are going to head to the sewing machine where we will sew where we have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we can also finish off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then attached your skirt to your bodice and you've also finished that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, you can then go ahead and also remove your gathering stitches. Then we are going to turn our dress out the right way. And we are then going to press that seam allowance now up towards our bodice. Once pressed, we are then going to head back to the sewing machine to top stitch that seam allowance up in place towards our bodice using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have then top stitched your seam allowance up towards your bodice, you are now looking at your completed Dahlia dress. So this is my tiered skirt version and I also have my simple skirt version as well. I will link a separate tutorial in the description box of this video for you to go ahead and watch if you wish on how to tie the perfect bow for the back of your Dahlia. Congratulations, you've now completed your beautiful Dahlia dress. Please feel free to join our main Peony Patterns Facebook group where you can then share 
any photos of your makes using patterns by Peony Patterns. You can also join our Sew Along Facebook group as well, where we actually host these sew alongs in real time and split the construction up over a matter of days to sew each step together. And there are always amazing prizes to be won simply by participating. If you have enjoyed today's sew along, please like today's video and also subscribe to our channel for all future sew along videos. But that is now all for the Dahlia sew along. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon for another Peony Patterns sew along.